hey royals so i'm making a video today because i have some news i'm just gonna get straight to the point i'm not gonna make this a long thing but um i came on here to tell you guys that i'm pregnant so i know you guys are saying like damn like who isn't i know i felt the same way too i like when i found out and then a lot of youtubers instagram personality celebrities a lot of women are carrying babies during the most like craziest time of my generation and probably my mother's generation i don't think they had a pandemic like this i know our grandparents probably did or our great grandparents probably did but it's a different time for us and i know you probably if you're pregnant right now you probably will feel like you know you get a lot of judgment people are probably looking at you like oh you got a corona baby all of that like girl I'm, we're about to get into that but the only reason why i am making pregnancy videos right now right now actually i'm currently in my second trimester um i think i'm about 34 weeks so i'm at the end of like my second trimester and um i wanted to start making videos now because this pregnancy is kind of not really unique but i wanted i haven't seen any videos with people in the i don't want to say condition but who has a similar pregnancy to me so my pregnancy might um be different because i have scoliosis um i discovered i had scoliosis in my late teens i was about 16 17. i had a spinal surgery and that's been about like nine years ago because i'm currently 25 i'm gonna be 26 in october and um I remember when I got a little older and I started thinking about my future, I would go on YouTube to see if there's any other women that are um, pregnant and they had a spinal fusion. And the ones who I came across, they all had C-sections. And that's not the way I want to go. And I don't feel like it's impossible to have a vaginal birth with a spinal fusion to doctors. It may sound like you should just have a C-section because they don't think that your back is strong and all of that stuff so we're gonna get into detail of that i didn't want this to be a regular like sit down and talk so i decided that i'm going to do like face mask and stuff while i'm talking because i can't watch these videos either with the person just sitting and talking so we're gonna do some masks i'm gonna probably do like five different masks so i didn't cleanse my face because i don't want to strip my skin oh also if you didn't know i am a licensed esthetician in new york city um i got my license december yeah december 2019 um so thank god that i was able to hold on some more i was able to do the natural course in person and do hands-on so um anyways we're just gonna get straight to it so um, since we're gonna do some face mask, I'm gonna put on. Oh, I have on like my robe. This is like a robe that I use for clients because I want to put the mask on my decollete area. So I'm gonna use um, a headband because I don't want my edges to get um, masked on them and I have to sit there and kind of like wipe it off or whatever. So I'm gonna put this on and do it really tight oh well i guess i can't do it that tight and just pull it back all the way how do i look with my ears now it's fine so um so i did that so i have like all my things i have like bowl i have a bowl of water over here um for when i need to wet my cloths to wipe off any mask or anything i have like my i finally got a fridge so um yeah so all the masks that i'm going to be using is in the fridge so first i want to start off with a clay mask a clay mask really draws out like um dirt and impurities this one i had for a while it's just like a basic uh it's called golden honey milk this brand is no longer in this company actually is no longer in business but i still had their mask um i stopped using it because it has goat milk in it and i was like kind of vegan but i took but then i think about it like to get goat milk you should you don't have to harm the goats so it's just that i probably i as far as like i wouldn't ingest um goat meat at all um so it also has canine clay it has turmeric and it has the goat milk so milk is like really good for oily skin 
um it can help dry skin it went hydrated but it will get you like extra smooth skin and it and milk is like a lactic acid lactic acid is safe to use during pregnancy but when you're pregnant you should not use glycolic and salicylic i have a lot of products that i cannot use anymore because i'm pregnant so i had to change everything if you want to see a pregnant esthetician skincare routine please let me know down below and i will gladly do one um so yeah i'm gonna mix this with this ayurvedic uh um, powder it's orange it's like orange regular orange powder so it says for um glowing skin so it's like orange peel powder orange is um brightening is vitamin c I also use vitamin C serum so um, I'm actually gonna take off my necklace because when you're using clay it shouldn't touch any metal so and this is real gold so um, I'm gonna take this off because I don't want it to affect the clay mask and then um, brutalize my skin and I also was thinking about adding some uh, aloe gel oh my gosh I had this like this on for so long so it's like really tangled i had to double it up because it's extra long uh oh i can't get it off because of this oh i have like a thread thing oh, no see when you're a procrastinator i should have like took this off a long time ago but i don't want to pop my necklace shit i'm just gonna leave it like this um but yeah, I also wanted to add this aloe gel that I've been using on my face and my body and my um, stomach. So I got this from, hold on, I can't close this with my hand. I got this from Amazon. I'll show like a closer look at these products, but it's um, aloe vera and it has manuka honey and apple stem cells, um, orchid stem cells, and it's good for face, body, and hair. Uh, I don't put aloe on my hair anymore. I don't really think it does much for my hair but I'm also gonna mix this in there so um, I'll probably I want to use the gel instead of water so it can be like a real paste so I'm going to just scoop out a little bit of this I do want some like good exfoliation because of the milk so I'll probably do like two ooh, I don't think you can see two of these and probably two of the um the orange peel so anyways yeah let me um talk so we're gonna talk about the scoliosis part first so um like i said i have discovered that i have scoliosis when i was 16 and the crazy part is usually people find out from their doctors my doctor neglect to discover that um and i had the same doctor since i was a newborn so um she's been my doctor for those 16 years and uh the way how i found out it was just so random it was just a day that i was home and i just um i was on the toilet actually <laughs> and i was tracing down my spine while i'm sitting on the toilet i remember it was the fall like it was because i remember seeing leaves like coming down through my window in the bathroom and um so like this is uh, oh the way how I have the camera I can't even like okay so this is how it looks it's just like powder so um I'm gonna squeeze some gel in there and see how it looks mixed up and just squeeze like a generous pump of it I wish I had honey so I could add to it but um oh I don't like how that looks so I'm gonna add some water uh, I need something to scoop this water out. So anyways, um, I was 16. I was tracing my spine one day. And then I was like, I don't know if I'm bugging, but it doesn't seem straight. And so I went to my mom. I was like, I don't know if I'm like over diagnosing myself or whatever. Because I tend to do that. And I was like, um, see if my spine is straight. And my mom lined her fingers down my back and was like wait where's your spine i'm like it has to be there because i'm standing up and she told me like to touch my toes and she's she's like why is one side of your rib cage higher than the other uh i was like i don't know i just thought i was just really big boned and that's just how my bones are because i do have a really broad back 
and I know I got that from my father's side so I thought that's just how my body is so this is how it looks now I just added a little bit of water so I'm just gonna put this on my face so um yeah I just thought I had a really broad back I didn't think of it as anything and at that age I was learning to like dress my body so I kind of got used to having that type of um frame so I didn't see it as anything but my mom was like that's not normal Kayla like <laughs> when did you discover this why you never said anything I was like it wasn't a big deal to me so um anyways fast forward we make a doctor's appointment and the doctor is like yeah you have scoliosis and I looked at her like you failed me as a doctor I didn't tell her that but that's how I looked at her and that's kind of when my um faith in doctors kind of just was like decreased because she's been my doctor since I was a newborn she always made sure you yeah, had to check our development check um to ask us if we're having sex or whatever as we gotten older and whatnot but she failed to check do they're supposed to do a, a certain procedure every time during your checkup especially as a child to make sure that you're developing and growing properly so um and when i remember in high school when i told my friends like oh i have scoliosis i have to do surgery or whatever they were like she didn't check your back and even one of my friends she was like yeah my doctor always tell me like touch my toes and they check to see if um their spine is straight or like you know there's no hump or what, or what have you so yeah she never checked that and my mom always swore by my doctor because she's ethnic i'm not even going to say where she's from um but you know like we trusted her so um yeah so from there we had to go through the whole process of like um booking my surgery i had to miss uh the last ending months of my high school year thank god i was a junior so i didn't miss like prom or none of that so but i was i was majoring in cosmetology so i was missing like a good chunk of like what i'm supposed to know if i'm planning on taking the state board um to become a licensed cosmetologist so i did miss a lot i was homeschooled uh the surgery was six hours long uh my i'll put a picture of my x-ray because i think my mom still has it so i'll put it up if i can find it but I my spine was literally in an S and I guess that's why it wasn't obvious because I kind of looked symmetrical unless you looked at me really really hard you couldn't tell that my spine wasn't straight you couldn't tell at all so um yeah so after oh shoot but yeah I definitely gotta watch this it'll come out though um so yeah after that I had my surgery like I said it was six hours long um I don't know like the the t3 t2 I don't I don't know those um those technical terms for like the your spine like your how you call it you know yeah you guys know what I mean for the people who know um like each each I think they're called vertebrae are they had they're numbered so that's how they figure out from where to where is your curve so um uh, so to be specific i am flexible in the lumbar area like i can i can arch my back a little bit because my lumbar is free and the top of my back um up to my neck is free so from say my shoulder blades to the top of my lumbar is where i have the rods and the moment they told me that i had to do surgery the first thing i was wondering is can i can i have children like can i be pregnant but i didn't ask that question because i was 16 at the time and i didn't want my mother to think i was sexually active because i really wasn't so i just asked like oh would i still be able to dance and they were like yeah of course you will still be able to like do activities or whatever but while you're healing you just need to be careful i was like that's not a problem so um yeah so that was always my question growing up i was always curious so as i got older i was like researching like you know would i still be able to have children and i saw a lot of women in a lot of studies that they did have children but they had c-sections and so a cesarean and i didn't want that i didn't want i don't want a cesarean so um i started doing i started doing a little more of like my own research and i found only one woman on youtube who I'm gonna talk for some few minutes, who said that um she had a natural birth well no when i found her she was pregnant 
and she but she didn't have her baby yet so i was hoping that she was going to follow up and say if she had a natural birth or not and she has rods it looked like from like up and down her spine she doesn't look like she has any flexibility as much as i do so i was really hoping and praying for her that she had a vaginal birth just so i could see if it's possible to be honest and um to see like how do you go about that like like um what does she have to do whatever so long story short it's crazy because when i found out i was pregnant i looked her up again and she did come out with a video and she said she had a vaginal birth i'll link her down below um for anyone who probably whose case is probably more um identical to hers than how my rods are placed um and probably age too because i wanted to see how long um she had her surgery like my because it's been nine years for me and i think it was shorter for her or longer i don't remember so that was another thing too because i was also contemplating about getting mine removed my rods removed after it's been so many years because they just came out well they didn't just come out with it but they started to treat people differently and do different surgeries where you don't have to have rods and you can have more flexibility and there will be a different way that they can um straighten your spine externally without having to do surgery so i was looking into that so that's i wanted to see if it was possible like if i could still have children or whatever and i could still have a normal life then i wouldn't go um that drastic after so basically yeah i'm coming out with this video to for anyone who also has scoliosis or a spinal fusion um and they want to see like the different more exposure to see different type of pregnancies um but yeah anyways like i said she had a vaginal birth she said the way how she had to deliver she had to deliver standing up so my goal is to probably as soon as i hit the third trimester stretch more um to have more flexibility and walk more i haven't to be honest i have not been walking only if i had appointments or i'm going out or whatever literally have not been walking at all um the mask is starting to dry i wanted to dry a little more but i want to move on to like other masks and the camera doesn't look as green as it does here but it's green um but yeah i'm gonna give it like a few more minutes i'm just trying to dry it a little faster so yeah so that's why i wanted to come out with the videos um to now bring you along the journey because honestly nothing different has been um happening like i have other friends with um scoliosis and they did the spinal fusion and they always ask me am i experiencing like excruciating back pain and to be honest i used to get back pain now and again when it rains but now since i've been pregnant i haven't experienced um any back pain while it's been raining um oh but act but now and again at night i will get like lower lumbar pain like where there's no rods it will feel really like like cramps like how uncomfortable your back feels when you're on your cycle your menstrual cycle and it's like that and it's intense and i explained it to my mom she's like yeah labor pain is way more intense than that and she would know because she had my brother and i natural birth um yeah vaginally so she had to go through the whole labor thing with both of us so she would know how it feels without any epidural or anything but um yeah so it it's excruciating um i had a doctor's appointment yesterday with my midwife and i let her know like that i've experienced that so far um she was like yeah I, she said yeah like you know it's normal i guess all pregnant women go through that so which is i guess cool to know but um yeah nothing out of the ordinary has been happening uh just that um yeah nothing so as i get bigger because like my stomach is not that i'm not i don't carry that big it seems because i'm 24 weeks and my bump still looks pretty small so um yeah it's it's nothing yet so i'm gonna take this mask off i'm gonna use my darker cloth i do have a darker one than this i got these from amazon and i like the colors because they go with like the aesthetic that i have for my um my brand so i'm gonna just get some water and wet wet my so i can just wipe this off i'm gonna try to do it in like one sweep so 
but the mask is tightening up a little bit which is good so that means it's been doing its thing so i'm softening the clay mask and i'm just gonna wipe i need to stop looking at the camera and look in here so i try not to wipe down sometimes but clay mask is um hard to come off so I have to wipe it like that do y'all see a glow yet <laughs> I haven't actually like done a like a spa day like this for myself because oh my gosh so let me get to the next part of what i wanted to talk about the first trimester of pregnancy during a pandemic oh my gosh i would not recommend at all <laughs> for me especially like okay i live in new york city i don't drive um the father and i do not live together i live with my mother still and the goal was, before the pandemic had started was for me to get my own place i saved up and i was ready but then i found out i was pregnant and then it was a pandemic so then everything was closed so <laughs> i couldn't um really do anything oh the water looks funny i might as well just went sitting here then so yeah i couldn't do anything um all my plans had changed i know i didn't feel that way because of the pregnancy it was mainly because of the pandemic because i believe like you know if you're expecting a child like it's all a part of god's plan somehow we don't know but um i'm thankful um i'm happy and i am excited to meet this baby um i know the gender but i'll talk about more info about the baby later down so next mask i want to move on to let's see open the fridge should i do another clay or should i do a jelly hmm i think i'm gonna do another clay so the clay mask i'm gonna use is from keels is the turmeric cranberry seed energizing radiant mask so i'm gonna wipe off my mask tool and wipe it off on this and because i use this with clients i open it i mean not open it i scoop it in like a different way so i will make sure that i scoop up enough for my entire face and then just put it on my skin like that and i just took this out the fridge so it's kind of cold which is good i see a little glow like i don't know if you guys can tell but my face has a little glow so i'm definitely gonna keep doing that mask and keep it on for longer i like to start with my cheeks because that's usually the oiliest part of my face but since i've been pregnant my skin is pretty dry so um or not as oily but yeah but um what was i saying yeah so the first trimester i i don't want to say i was depressed because i know i wasn't but i was feeling low in spirits like my spirit was really low um especially like the as soon as i found out two weeks i didn't tell anyone because i had to tell my mom first and i honestly didn't know her reaction because i shared with her like my plans what i was trying to do this year so i didn't know her reaction and um also like it, it we was, just wasn't planning for it was just a shock so i was really nervous to tell her and yeah i was really nervous to tell her um i know a lot of people will probably say like they don't they don't really their parents opinion doesn't really hold weight on them and i used to say the same thing but to be honest was kind of we like growing up was kind of conditioned to care about 
what she thinks of her opinion because whenever we didn't listen to her advice like things wouldn't go our way so i was nervous to how um yeah like her response and what she would say so i so when i finally told her like she didn't believe me and she didn't like my response i mean she didn't like my delivery i should say um and depending how many like views or how many people actually watch this i would do like a story time of that of how i told how i told her um but when i told other family members like i literally like after i told her like um she was like very supportive she still is she's basically like my baby daddy but she just doesn't do like the above and beyond stuff but as far as like she would give me advice um go with me to shop for clothes and stuff um remind me to go food shopping or to eat because when you're pregnant like especially in the beginning you're you have no desire to eat sometimes like and it's not even because you're trying to be cruel or something it's like your energy your vibe you know what you don't want to eat but you don't know what you want to eat so when everyone's asking me like oh what do you feel like eating i don't know i just know i don't want to throw up and i haven't i look so scary i haven't um i haven't vomited like crazy which i'm thankful for i probably so far probably vomited like four times but i learned to like as soon as i feel the urge i'll either open the window go by a window and breathe or like just relax and breathe because the moment you start to panic um you will vomit and you'll keep vomiting i knew i didn't want the type of pregnancy where i'm throwing up every day all the time no matter what because that will irritate me because i don't like it doesn't feel good to me to to vomit regurgitate whatever you want to call it um doesn't feel nice it's not cool for me at all so i did not want to go through that um but yeah like and it's very pregnancy is very very lonely um especially during a pandemic because with the father and i not living together there's nowhere to really go during the pandemic i don't drive um things are not that mobile for us so um yeah i wasn't really able to go anywhere uh, for a long time and so i was stuck at home like a lot of days being sad and like depressed i watched the movies and stuff but i was really craving to go outside like being outside and going somewhere doing something adventurous was my real craving and i okay so the mask is like hardening like it's dry now so i'm gonna spray my face and work in the mask so that's what i'm gonna do okay so the cranberry seeds yeah the cranberry seeds in this is to exfoliate so you just like let me get a little bit of this one i just rub it around to try to like work it in and get extra exfoliation but um yeah so i was really craving to go outside go to the beach i live in new york city so i don't live near low, no pretty lakes and stuff like if you live somewhere else it's very nature um forward i don't live in that type of environment so it was just not a lot to do and what i usually do like people always ask me like there's nothing to do but what would you what would have you done i usually go to museums and galleries like if you watch my videos then you know that i go to galleries and the museum i go to music festivals and stuff i look really wild right now i go to all of those things for inspiration or um just to support other artists learn things and i couldn't do that and i was more sad because i had a vision for how i wanted my pregnancy to go and ladies that will make your pregnancy more miserable with um pushing a lot of like how you would have wanted a lot of things to be ideally but you have to i had to learn to be realistic 
like Kayla if you really want to go outside you can it's just that the travel since I don't drive is going to be annoying um I can't find people to just go with me when I want so that would stress me out that would be annoying and yeah I would be mad so um yeah I had to be I had to be real with myself um in those times especially and um yeah I just okay let me take this off did I want to lose this yeah so yeah um I'm gonna just spray my face because I only have like two bowls and I don't want to contaminate like the the water if I was in the bathroom this would be easier but I like sitting by my my vanity and stuff to do this okay Ooh. but um yeah I would have went to the museums I would have went to gardens I wanted to go strawberry and berry picking so bad this summer but all the people who I knew with cars just didn't have the time to take <laughs> little old me anywhere so yeah so my advice for like if you're doing this alone or you end up doing a lot of this alone as far as like um taking care of yourself because i can say strongly i take care of myself like i have to cook for myself majority of the time um i have to fetch my own food <laughs> and um yeah i have to go food shopping for myself i have to yeah so if you have if your pregnancy is going to be set up that way or if you're not sure be um be prepared like think ahead especially early in your pregnancy okay when i'm able to go here and here this is what i'm going to do like plan a calendar for yourself and that's what i'm going to start doing um i don't drive so the places that i would want to go i would either have to pay for a lift to like go somewhere like that's still in my city but i don't want to take the train or something like that um then i would i would just have to make that sacrifice and make a budget so make a budget for activities to do um during your pregnancy and how you want to eat realistically because i wasn't eating meat eggs nothing um only fish for three years and since i'm pregnant cooking has been an exhausting thought and i went back to eating eggs because i it was quick to make and thinking of what to eat was very exhausting um so i kind of just was like sis we're just gonna do eggs <laughs> we're gonna welcome eggs into the family um And that's literally what happened. So when I make eggs, I make sure that I would load it with greens. So um, I'm also getting like uh, my iron as much as possible. That's another thing. Salads have not been looking good to me. Um, so yeah. So another part that I want to touch on with pregnancy is um, envy yeah envy and jealousy i have i can absolutely say i have never experienced envious envious i had never envied anyone or been jealous of anyone until this pregnancy journey right here and i could say that strongly because i was i was taught very young like not to envy or be jealous of anything anyone has because you don't know how they got it you don't know um but they have yeah you just don't know how people got it and you have to be a strong believer in like whatever you deserve will come good or bad because i will keep you balanced so i never like looked at anyone in an envious way um so yeah envy was like something that i feel like i've learned during this pregnancy and 
I was envious of other pregnant women on social media <laughs> and it's not hold on it's not funny and I wouldn't say that it's sad either because you kind of can't help it especially like my situation was completely different so I'm gonna give you like a gist oh so the next mask I'm gonna use is like this um jelly mask so it's uh, how am I looking it's supposed to be like a hyaluronic filling um mask like it just seeps into your skin really hydrates since I did two different type of clay exfoliation mask I want to add some hydration and moisture so it has ginger and turmeric vitamin c jelly mask so I'll try to put like a better picture so you can see up close but um I haven't used this much because I wasn't sure if the ingredients was safe or okay but I checked them the only like um aggressive ingredients in it is the perfume in this but it's okay I just won't leave it on my face for long so I just took this out the fridge and that's what it looks like jelly so um this I use personally on myself I don't share this with clients so I can double dip um but yeah so like these are like the internet people <laughs> I became envious of I don't know if you know her on youtube but her name is earth her channel is earth mama medicine and they i was watching them her and her her partner matt i was watching them do van life for like a year around different cities and i was watching van life before they started doing it but when they started i was like oh my gosh i now i'm really excited to do that and that was one of my plans for myself um for this year was to get the ball rolling on that and you know, they were doing van life for a year they were going to beautiful places and they're like spiritually deep people so i was learning a lot as far as like the locations that they went to um things that they discovered and it was really exciting to watch and i was i'm so like i was so happy for them i'm still currently happy for them like i literally always wish them the best and safety because you can tell they're really they just seem like really good people that deserve all the great things that's happening for them and um the moment that they decided to slow down on van life uh completely they came across their dream home down south which is a huge property and now they're becoming homesteaders so homes if you don't know homesteading is like you basically have your own garden you mind your own animals and you um, whatever supplies you need you can get from uh, things that you either grow or maintain on your property so they just started that um, and it's beautiful and then they found out they were pregnant and they took us on the journey with them throughout the pregnancy uh, she gave birth I think four months ago uh, to a beautiful baby girl and I was and she was pregnant before I, I got pregnant at all and i was just so happy for them and i was like you know what i'm gonna get a piece of that i want to create that life or whatever um if i was realistic with myself that i it's a possibility i won't be able to create these things with the partner that i want because it's just we're we're evolving and wanting like um different things these days so um yeah so like i was just like you know what i don't mind doing this by myself because it's just me you know i'll have to check on but now I have a, I'm having a baby so I have to think about the baby also but anyways yeah like they had the baby and I would the part where I was envious of mostly is that she has a, a partner that even as frustrating as the job is to wait on someone hand and foot and they have an excuse not to do dishes or not to do certain things and you kind of have to um wait on them in a way like take care of them or whatever and you're kind of second sometimes but i feel like he understood that because being because he can't be pregnant for her like that as much as guys will probably say oh i, I wish i could do this for you you can't <laughs> so since you can't how about you be there for me in this way of being supportive and taking care of me as much as possible and trust me we will reap the reward of having a healthy baby and not a lot of men think that way they their they autom their ego automatically goes into their masculinity being diminished or demised or or minimized and it's like 
the part i feel like one of the main parts about being a man is knowing that when you when you have a family when you literally have to be last because as a mother a lot of the times mothers end up being last and no one notices that until she has like a really deep breakdown or no one sees that but her children when they get older and she's blessed with them taking care of her some parents has has children like that that when they get older they take care of them but anyways i was i was envious that she had someone there like as soon as she wakes up to help her to you know even though you can't take the pain away from a pregnant woman at least like make it easier you go to the store and all of that stuff and she try to relax and she enjoy she could enjoy like her home and her property and she could step outside and get fresh air and they were eating like watermelons every day i was just like <sighs> sometimes i was watching the video and i just wanted to cry because i was like i live in freaking the clusterfuck of new york city ain't none of this shit going on and i always thought i would be like a city girl forever but as i've gotten older the city is is like it's cool like it's cute i will bring my kid here like every every year or like probably once or twice a season but i don't like the city is not it for me anymore because i value peace of mind a lot and it's very you can't have peace of mind in new york city but i've been here for so long it's like i rather try somewhere else or a different way you know see other ways i don't want to be in the concrete jungle forever you know um but anyways it was her and then another girl that i follow her name is jess riley she also has a youtube of like how she colors her natural hair her husband is amazing like he you can tell he's a good good man like not just for taking care of her but you can see the how much he loves her and i'm so glad that she seemed to appreciate someone like him because a lot of dudes will pretend that they're that type of guy and they really can't be like they're really not those type of guys and you could tell he's genuinely like that he genuinely loves her and appreciates her and they're pregnant also she's gonna she actually had her baby um today i was just looking at her story on instagram she had her baby today um so i'm so happy for them so they can you know bask in that but i would he's just like he the way how he looks at her how he takes care of her like is amazing and so yeah, look at their instagram just i'll drop her instagram just look at their instagrams and stuff like you will see what i'm talking about another one is um this muslim couple her name i think her name is yasmin and um she has a youtube channel also she has beautiful eyes beautiful girl um and they're they're muslim and her and they're they're young they're younger than me like i think just a year younger than me and um they're like another i watch them on youtube like you, you know you see the and you see her husband um that sometimes he's like frustrated with certain things but he's there like he's there like that's all like that's literally all you ask for in a pregnancy is if someone says they could be there and they're there like to just make you stay out of your head most of the time like really in enjoy this like a lot is on you already as a mother you have to make sure that you're healthy that so the baby's healthy you have to make sure you're not doing anything dangerous so you're not risking your pregnancy you have to make sure you're where you are is like conducive for your pregnancy all you ask is for that so like to someone to like hold some of that for you like help assist you with some of that because it doesn't take it obviously takes two people to make the baby so it's not ideal for one person majority like 95 percent of the time to you know not have help or a community or something i'm gonna start wiping this off because it's like my skin sucked up most of it i don't know if you can tell so i was saying that i had to switch to my phone so um i was saying that i'm gonna wipe with the soft ones first so i'm just gonna wet them in this i think you could wet these i don't i'm not sure how they work it's my first time using stuff like this and i'm just gonna wipe in whatever's there and whatever is left if there's anything left i'll just scrub it off so um yeah like i was envious of them but what what i keep telling myself is that it's not impossible for me not to have that one day like i know like i know there's still time if god allows that i can 
like I will experience that too but like this is my first pregnancy like of course I can't put any expectation on what I don't I don't know I don't know how things are gonna be um so I can't like make myself get into that because probably I'll have all of that of like I'll get to experience that when things are different you know because also what they have like my mom would say I don't know how long it took them to find that or get that um and who and who knows you know how things will be for them I think it pretty much wiped off everything so I don't need yeah. but um yeah like I don't I like it's a lot of unknown like I don't I don't know how things will be for me in the future and all of that um it's still tangible you know it's not like they're not tangible so um yeah but i'm like i'm happy for them but like another part of pregnancy people don't get is and i wish also like partners would get is that it's frustrating not being in control of your body i don't think they get how how much you're not in control um <clears throat> a lot of the times as far as like no one wants to be sick like no one wants to be nauseous no one wants to be hungry every two hours like no one wants that so my face is dry now so i'm gonna use a sheet mask i have like two different sheet masks i have this one looks messy but it's from this skincare line called image it's accessible for estheticians so like you have to ask your esthetician to purchase the products for you um but one day when i use it like you guys will see it um when i buy more of these then i would probably use this but this is like a hydrating one and then i have like this a uh, korean mask um this one says for brightening and moisturizing and firming is um a collagen essence mask so i may use this one i think this is what i'm going to use because i'm focusing on brightening um and i can always get hydration with my other skincare products but again like guys um let me know if you want like a skincare routine because i'll probably do one regardless but i probably won't do one that fast if no one's really requesting it i'll just do it whenever i feel like it but if like people are requesting for me to do it then i'll do it um i also have like this jelly thing to hold a face mask because some face masks are either too small or too big for your face um for me sometimes it's a hit and miss so i have that there um to help so i'm gonna open this and unravel but um i love these i got this off on amazon but next time when i order these um i may just order them straight off of a korean website because uh it's probably like no difference it's like the same thing but i wanted to get more korean products because they're really efficient it's just that um i just need to see which ones is safe during pregnancy oh it's nice and cold because i just took this out my fridge and i'm just gonna it's sticking to my face pretty well i like to take these flappy parts and fold it in so i could get my under eye circles and yeah this one's already in so i could do that make sure i spread it on my nose and then so i make sure everything's smooth and then i work on the top so i do piece by piece the chin part make sure that's good and then i come here spread this out lift it up Oop. And then lift that up customize your face is this inside no it wasn't good thing i double checked but it's inside okay so that's on my face and i like to squeeze out the rest whatever's in there there's actually some coming out so i'm gonna put that all over my neck and under here because when you're pregnant you get that pregnancy mask so far i haven't gotten it intensely on my face but i noticed my neck is getting a bit darker so I always try to focus um, brightening products on there. And I don't know when the pregnancy mask goes away, but like how long after your pregnancy it goes away. But um, 
just gonna rub that on my decollete as well in my neck so after that I'm gonna put this on to keep it in place and I got this oh, I got this off of Amazon too I gotta take my ears out oh so I look crazy right now but I just have to leave it on for a little bit till the mask like really sticks it doesn't go like all over your whole face like some parts is out but it's okay um yeah but for the most part it's on and what i like to do is take my roller out i use this on clients as well i just took this out of my fridge and just rub this if it's really cold you could feel it um it wasn't in the fridge i just turned on my fridge like in the beginning of this video so it's cold i just gotta keep going over but this also helps press in like all the moisture and the, um, the essence in your into your skin so and your face gets really hot with all this compression so it will help really seep in to your skin so i just keep doing that and just focus on where i need the brightening let me close this um but yeah like i was saying oh, okay but yeah like i was saying like um it's annoying not being in control of your body and like if if the partners are listening as well like you have to understand it's very frustrating especially if you're a person who's used to having control of your body and you've been learning to maneuver your body for so long and now you have to learn how to maneuver a pregnant body and pregnant sick um you know low days or tough days it's not easy so um yeah just have like just cut them a little slack like i know women are strong but we're not freaking warriors we didn't sign up to be no warriors and then when women do big themselves i'm talking about their warriors and stuff men don't like that because it's like oh the feminist movement all that bs like pick and choose the type of woman you want like come on now you know what type of lady you want so you should kind of know what kind of partner she wants in this whole experience and you know what i like especially for me when a woman does a lot of this stuff on her own um you will hear about it like she's like she'll let you know that she felt very alone and like parenting for women starts as soon as we're pregnant um for some men it don't start until like they physically i look so crazy right now <laughs> until they physically see the baby but for women as soon as your body is changing you start to feel the baby or you start to connect with them um that's when pregnancy starts and i feel like pregnancy needs to start or parenting needs to start for men a bit early like around the same time would be nice because um when it's not it's not hitting them yet or they don't they're not around the experience every day uh they're not they're not there how you need them to be and it's kind of not their fault if that's the case but at the same time it's like grow up bro so yeah so my i'm gonna start like with some advice so my advice like i would give oh, my advice i would give like um pregnant women especially if you're if you're discovering you're going to be um taking care of yourself throughout your whole pregnancy is to make a calendar of plans for yourself and even if you don't feel up to it that day like it's okay you can do it the next day you feel better schedule how you're gonna get there and stuff um how long you would stay out because when you're pregnant sometimes you can be tired and you kind of want to get home or whatever um so schedule that out and especially like during the pandemic is harder so if you're pregnant right now during the pandemic some beaches are are opening up everywhere if you live in a nature friendly sit by the lake and just even if you're not that type of person try it one day and you know even if you don't feel anything for you it's probably good for your baby so go to a lake go to the beach and really like listen and hone in and listen to the water if you're a type of person you can't just sit there you have to do something um pray like pray and look at the scenery and just keep 
like letting your baby know that you're thankful that they're here on this journey with you and you're excited to meet them because we forget a lot of times to try to stay positive as much as possible because you don't want your kid to feel cranky or crabby because of your emotions is always up and down because they don't they're they're kind of like living off of you so whatever you do in whatever way they're it's reflecting that for like it's like a mirror they're doing exactly what you're doing and going through whatever so um yeah, do that. That's what I wish I did early in, in my pregnancy. Make a calendar for myself. Um, don't be mad at friends and family if they can't be there for you because at the end of the day, they're not they're not pregnant. And it's hard for non-pregnant people to relate to pregnant people. And it's not their fault because it's like it's a mindset that you're in or you have to get into. And they're trying to live their own life as well. So it's not fair to be mad at them if they can't be there for you or do what you need to um but who you do need to talk to is the person who impregnated you and if they can't be there then i would kind of advise you to prepare yourself for it to be the same way or close to the same way when the baby's here so um yeah that's my advice like don't be mad at your friends and if they want to be around or whatever for a couple of moments it's okay for me I um, even if a friend comes around I wouldn't be like okay you could babysit or if they say they want to babysit I wouldn't take them serious um unless their actions show differently like I have I have a friend that I always would like hang out with like go to parties and stuff with she's a cool person but um I already know she's not going to be my ideal like emergency person if I need to leave my baby with someone and it's not anything for her it's just that um yeah, that job's not for her right now. Unless she like becomes a mother of her her own, then you know she'll probably turn to that to be that person. But right now she's living her life, and I wouldn't want to um, put that on her. Like, I it's only fair to let people enjoy their life. Don't let them feel obligated to be there for you, even if you did them all these favors and stuff. Still, um, I'm not gonna um, depend on her like that. Um, and what other advice I had? Uh, I forgot what the advice I had. Oh, like learn, like still remember to like love yourself and your body and your baby. And I say that because in the beginning of pregnancy, it's very hard to re, like it's very hard. You're not, when you're first find out that you're pregnant, you can't feel your baby. You just feel that you're sick all the time. So with that stage, especially if you're very lonely and you're not doing anything and you don't have anyone else to be excited with, you will become very resentful and regretful and have a lot of negative energy because that's what happened to me i had like a lot of negative energy i mean a lot of negative vibes like i was becoming resentful saying like what ifs and stuff like that but i had to remember that for like my motto was always that everything happens for a reason and especially when it comes to new life like they're supposed to be here they're here for a certain reason if it's either to fulfill your life in some way or for them to teach you something or for you to teach them something or this is your time and your moment to to nurture and grow a certain being like this is the time that you're su that's supposed to be here to show them like this is how you maneuver in this type of world and this is what i've learned and or they're probably going to teach you how you should maneuver because children teach you a lot if you pay attention to them they can teach you a lot um but yeah i say that because it took me a long time to to connect to my baby and for my pregnancy to be real even like i felt kind of forced to tell family earlier than i would have wished to that i was pregnant i only told them because i was going to family events and i was showing a little bit um but even if like it felt weird that i'm sitting there pregnant nobody knows and then when i tell them and they do the math they're gonna be like so you sat there and you didn't say you know and to be honest i know my family wouldn't understand that i'm not ready to say anything and people would kind of take that as that you're ashamed and it's not even that it's just that you like i i instantly went into like protective mode even though i didn't connect with the baby yet i went to protective mode because i know how this world is i know how people is i know how bad my people are it don't matter if they're your friend or your family or whatever everyone will push their expectation or their mindset onto you so i didn't want people looking at me like um, they need to make me rethink, like, you know, um, my decision to, to be okay with being a mom right now. So I knew, like, I didn't want to tell anyone. And then people are just very bold. So I just didn't want to tell anyone anything because then they're going to do the math. Like the first thing they're going to be thinking about is like, oh, so you're having sex. It's like, okay. Like, and then you get the questions of like, oh, you wasn't 
using protection or whatever and i feel like at the age i am now it doesn't matter if i was using protection or not like i'm at the age that i know that there's protection there and if i'm not using it it's obviously a reason like if you know me then you know it's obviously a reason why i didn't like certain um routes wasn't taken so yeah um let me take this off because i think it's time but um yeah so and i would say like just remember to love your body because you're I'm not really stressed about like weight gain or anything because I know um like my genes first off like I gain weight very easily so I already knew it was inevitable and it's a pandemic can't there's only so much I can do and I've never been a exercise person um the way how I keep fit is to just keep busy and go places but obviously I couldn't go nowhere so um yeah and like when you're pregnant and you're healthy it means you're just nourishing your baby like hopefully the in a healthy way you're nourishing your baby um but don't be like me and not walk like i'm going to have to walk like literally every day probably twice a day in my third trimester because i didn't walk the whole first two trimesters so um yeah i just got to get ready for that um i will also say like look out pretty early for mom friends or mom groups uh because you may have to change your friends faster than you you would like to or you think like i never i didn't have mom friends because i couldn't relate to them and um yeah i couldn't yeah i just wasn't in that space but now that i'm a mom i'm not putting it on my friends or people that i know to be there for me or be a replacement baby daddy or anything if they are cool if they're not another piece of advice is to gain your independence if you have to like if even if you have a partner and they work they work a lot it's okay because you're gonna need that money hopefully they're saving and everything um but make sure that you know you if you have to drive like make sure even if you don't have a license or anything at that time make sure you at least get a permit so that's my goal right that's what i'm doing right now i'm in the process of doing right now is to get my permit um so i could have at least some type of independence because the way how things um are is setting up so far like i'm gonna have to even though i was trying to um not push myself to have to do everything and cover everything but just in case i you have to make sure you have your independence so if it's driving knowing how to put a meal together um uh i don't know whatever stuff you're, you you usually would depend on other people for learn to try to do it yourself because you're gonna have to change your life in a way and depending um how things are Oh, you're going to have to change your life. And another thing is pamper yourself. So like I said, this was like my first time, um, my whole pregnancy that I really sat down and did like treatments and stuff. I do my skincare now and again. I need to be more, con I wish I was more consistent. Uh, I will force myself to be more consistent. But um, pamper yourself. Like once a week, sit down, get some products. Even if you have to make, you know, put, make a little two, one, two, three products and do your face or do your hair. Um, take that time out and do that or go to the nail salon get like a nice foot massage head massage or whatever get your hair washed at the beauty salon and even if you don't usually go to the beauty salon like just let them wash your hair and do a treatment or whatever and then you could just go about your business um yeah like just do little things make a cute like dessert for yourself try like chocolate dipped strawberries i don't like chocolate dipped stra um stra stra what chocolate dipped strawberries is that what it's called I don't, I don't know but um yeah look like do things like that and yeah it'll make you like feel better do little treatments on your belly and stuff i watched this this girl um i don't know her name from my head but i just found her she's pregnant also she always did a lot of like testing beauty stuff out and all of that and now that she's pregnant she's doing a lot of that also still so i'll link her below i'll link some like cool pregnant people to follow even though they're not pregnant right now, a lot of their uh, past videos are very informative and I rewatch those to um, learn some things. Also drink a lot of water. I have not been drinking a lot of water and now I've been starting to. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to, this is a 62 ounce. Oh, 32 ounce. So I'll try to do two or three of these. Yesterday I did two of these, so today i'll try to no i can't do three i'll probably do two and then tomorrow i'll do three but um yeah that's my advice 
we did all of our masks my skin is looking glowy which i love so um after this i'll probably just put on some serum since my face is clean it basically is i did like two clay masks i'm gonna put on my serums and stuff and my moisturizer and let that you know work in throughout the day until i take a shower again today um but yeah thank you for watching this video if you made it to the end then most likely you're probably a soon-to-be mama or you're a mom or you're planning to be one or you have scoliosis and you just want to see how it what i had to say or what have you whatever but um thank you for watching and if you want to see any other videos right, right now while i'm pregnant and i have gaining the knowledge um let me know and i'll surely do that or else i'm gonna take my cool time and come out with videos so thank you again see you later royals <laughs>